Hello, Desert Bearhawk fans. In the shop tonight. Uh, let's see what's 11:20 tonight. And uh, just finished up the top of the left aileron. So, thought I'd shoot a quick video and give you an update as to what I'm doing. Um, you can see that the all the gussets are in place, and the support structure for where the hinges go is in place. And we're on our way. Everything's nice and square and flat. This nose skin wasn't too difficult to put on. Um, a lot easier than doing the flaps, I can tell you. So, a um, couple things. I deviated from the plans um, a little bit. And I can hear people going, oh no, Dave, what are you doing? Don't do that. So let's just look at the plans right here. There's the plans. That's the aileron right there as indicated on the plans. And you can see this gusset right here. And what you'll notice in this gusset, or may notice is not in this gusset, is a lightning hole. Well, there's a lightning hole. Now, why did you do that, Dave? The plans are meant for your safety. Well, that's true. However, lightning holes in the flaps and as, as anyone knows, this, this additional metal right here is not really providing any additional structure per se. So I used my, I used my seam roller or my edge roller pliers, my edge roller tool, and I rolled down the, the edge of this. I didn't bob stick it. I just put a slight depression in it so it won't affect the covering. And uh, I put a lightning hole there, and the reason I did that, come over here, is because I want to be able to get my squeezer die down in there so I can squeeze the holes, the rivets rather. Without it, I'd have to buck some of these rivets along here and along here. And what I'm finding is, is because this skin is 20 thousandths, the material is pretty light. You know, it doesn't take but a, just a slight misstep to, to kind of really dent the snot out of this skin. So you want to try to squeeze them if you can. So I like to put a lightning hole in it. Another thing you'll notice here on the plans. And let's see. Oh, right here. This is called out for 32 thousandths. And this gusset is called out for 25 32, 25. Also notice there's no flanges on these gussets as indicated. Well, and the reason this one's heavier is this is where the push rod for the aileron goes in. So, but, and I had some 25, but I also had plenty of 32. So I made both gussets, both supports out of 32. You know, you can always go a little heavier so you don't want to go lighter. So I figured that was good. I had the material. It was it was better than hacking up a sheet. And uh, it's just going to make it that much stronger. Maybe make up for my little lightning hole transgression right here. Another thing I did too, you'll notice is, I don't know if you can tell, but I, I flanged over the edges here. The plans don't show that, but I did it anyway. So that made that, this is a super stiff now. So... I think we're golden there. Anyways, that's what I've been up to the last little bit. Had some stuff to do for work that's kind of been keeping me away. And I have to do some more stuff for work in the next couple of days that's going to keep me away. But uh, at this point, all I have to do is unclamp this from the table via these boards right here. You can see they got the screws and hold it down. There's one, two, and if I get lucky, I can get all three of them. I can, I think. And then... Uh, take off my little door shims that are holding the holding these ribs flat to the table and then flip this whole thing over and finish putting together the other side drilling the other side then uh, dimple it then prime it then Coleco it all back together with the bazillion Colecos and um, start riveting and I'll have this one knocked out pretty quick um, something kind of cool came for me in the mail today. Um, one, two, 
new Coleco pliers. My son got them for me for Father's Day. Um, I've been complaining that the Coleco pliers that I have, the original ones, those, been hurting my hand. So he got me these with these rubberized grips, which is a little nicer. Plus, uh, now I can have people help me with Coleco's. You know, when you're Coleco-ing up this big, long stretch here, you know, there's a bazillion Coleco's, but you can have, uh, you can have Junior in there Coleco-ing away, too. So that's helpful. And when we get to the wing, there'll be about four bazillion Coleco's in that. So everyone's going to have their own Coleco pliers in their back pocket. But anyways, that's where we are. The gussets on top are done. I like my lightning holes. I think they look pretty bueno. Um, everything is all locked down nice and tight. Um, had to do a little metal trickery on a couple places here to get everything to flow nicely, but it, it flows out really nice now. Looks good. And uh, we'll be ready to flip this thing over here Friday, probably Friday. Won't do much on it between now and Friday. But uh, by Saturday, by Saturday midday, this thing's going to be coming apart to get etched and primed. And by probably by Sunday night, it'll be done and we'll be starting on the other one. And the other one's, you know, the other one's half done it already. I've already got the nose ribs and the, and the uh, rear ribs drilled in place. So all I have to do is take this one off the board here, put the other one on the board, lock it down. And do the same treatment. I've already cut all my uh, all my pieces, so I've got all my parts for the other the other aileron. They're all cut. They're ready to go. And I got my other ailerons, uh, nose skins in my back of my truck, just sitting in the flatbed, stored up. And uh, we're on our way. So it won't be long before these two ailerons are done. And uh, we'll be reconfiguring the garage. There's our garage. We'll be reconfiguring the garage to um, set up for the the spars, which are right over there. Let's see them. And uh, start putting the wing together. So that's all we got. That's the uh, update from the shop. Hope you enjoy, and we'll see you next time.